wrap it, wrap it up. I integrated, this is not in the original PMTO, I integrated the construction of a family genogram because I thought it was really important to, uh, to get legacies of what were strength, stories of strength and, and narratives in the community. I want to point one thing to you. So these, these symbols, light blue was death, like for people who weren't no matter the, uh, there anymore. Amazing, uh, sadly, but this was a war context, death, you know, like the the other generations, and then transmission of violence and alcohol. It was one of the most powerful things I think I did because we didn't have to go convince them later about why not use harsh punishment and why so just amazing. So giving directions to kids, uh, breaking things into small steps, psychoeducation, Pete, what you experience in your body, worries, right? How to identify in their kids' uh, symptoms, traumatic symptoms. And these are some photos of the work with women. We worried, like, well, not everybody, I don't like role plays, will they, will they engage? It was just like culturally, like completely a hit. Karen, we were worried because they tend to be a little more reserved, not as it also worked. So good, good things in terms of the future. Okay, so we also used multi-method assessments, so standard, standardized measures, qualitative interviews, and parent-child interactions, even with the 14. So we've been able to, um, to publish on this work, and this is why now we, um, we're at the stage of, of applying for, for RCTs. So things worked, right? They came. The one part that we knew going into it, discipline takes much, is gonna take much more work. Uh, you don't change, as they say, like using the stick and very harsh disciplines overnight. But we know that they're willing to try. And what we found was that even going back, we, um, Chris went back to do his dissertation work with fathers and visited the moms again. Many of them have become, become like the person that is the community sort of expert on parenting. So they've, like, they have a lot of status in the community with parents. Um, but we also saw, he did the same measures. We saw that um, reduction of harsh punishment remained. This, I think it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of promise. Okay, I just, I said this, so. This was just here for you to see direct quotes from, from the moms on, um, on what they experienced. I won't. Next steps is coming up. So I shared with you, are we completely gone or do we have a couple? Three, <laughs> yeah. Okay, next steps is we're applying for funding. I'm applying for funding actually in conjunction. Um, you know, fingers crossed. Um, both internationally and in the US. And so I'm busy <laughs> and I, I'm looking at, I don't do it without like incredible support as well. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> so maybe I'll take like one or two questions and then we'll come back and have more time in the afternoon, right? Right, doing panel. Yeah. That's a great question. I, when I went to the NET training many years ago, I thought that I was going to go get, because I do narrative work, um, I thought that's what I was going to be get, doing. It, it wasn't. It's something different. But it's similar in that it connects to peop, people's stories in a very grounded way. And Michael, right before he died, he was working in some place. I think he was in the Congo. He was, he was working in some places in Africa. I got some of the assessment ideas, like I knew about the lifeline already, but I don't think I would have made the connection to use that as an assessment way, unless I had looked at some of, if I, if I didn't know about his work. So I, that's a, a big and important question. I think there are a lot of different connections. Like I said, I integrated the experimental and the narrative stuff in the parenting group was so essential. I never found myself battling with, first of all, I never said to them, don't, beat your kids. Uh, I provided alternatives. 
And I don't think I would have known how to do some of that language and that thinking without exposure to some of Michael's work. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go with one. <laughs> Like literally, how do we do that last? Yeah, yeah and then, yeah, because goodbye isn't, it was not just the one. So uh, I don't, I might have included a couple photos. We had an, an incredible ceremony and we invited family. By the way, like I wish I could, t throughout this whole time, these moms aren't gonna be able to do things unless gr they wouldn't have been grandmas, unfortunately. But there were, some had partners. So we were, like on Saturdays, we invited partners to come and older siblings who were taking care of families because she needed support, right? And we don't just, so we invited everybody. It, we gave them certificates. It really was a party. It was, you know, it, it, really special. But remember that Vivo has an office that stays there. And so there was a person who was trained in parenting and could, if they had questions, could, continue for over a year that re person was there as a resource and then Chris was going back to do assessments so there was this time for them to continue to try things out particularly with discipline which is such a hard thing they had they had support and we trained three local persons to be doing the role plays everything was done through interpreters and so they uh, one of them has a master's is a, a clinical um, level master's uh, and, and the other two they were there in the community as a resource as well so a short but the bottom line is you, you can't go and then just do this cut off yeah I'll try to I'll try to be brief <laughs> Yeah, I, I worried about that. So I, 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 was, I wasn't gonna learn the language like right there. So I, in 2010, the most I could commit was a sabbatical and three months on the ground, but I was working with people who knew the language and the, the German colleague had been working there for, you know, they do PhDs different in Germany, right? So she spent four years living there. She knew the language and she was my main partner during that initial stage. Um, so a lot of like highly qualified uh, interpreters, which is just so key, that knew how to navigate. They were much more than interpreters. They were, I mean, they were therapists themselves. They were consultants and family. Um, so here's what, it, here's how it happened. So we did groups three times a week, and in the, um, in the alternating days, we were training and meeting with the interpreters, the three interpreters. So they were also vetting for us. These examples work, this isn't gonna work. So, like all day long, the level of exhaustion <laughs> was intense. And on Sundays, we would spend all day looking for like power to charge our, because electricity was an issue in, in northern Uganda. So, yeah, I'm elaborate, but yeah, that's that's just such a huge piece. Uh, here with the current the current interpreters in Minneapolis, it was much more difficult actually. To, we had many more challenges, um, many more. The dance supported us. We're gonna have to figure this issue out. But it's also not, I don't know to what extent, with all the things we need to hold, is it realistic that we can also then learn the language or is it enough to really create close partnerships? I, I don't know the answer. Okay, I know I'm already going a little over, but I look forward to talking with you more this afternoon. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and um, we're looking forward to 